Richard Chaberry, what did you see and, and hear about him and, and what attracted you to him? I mean, I, I was there in Toronto when we signed him as a 20-year-old. So he's always been a good defender, a light bat, but just someone that adds depth, solidifies things for us. And, um, you know, beyond that, we wanted to get Johan going. We had talked about it throughout points of the year about getting him down to get every day at bats. So with the way things are set up right now after the trade deadline, you know, to have someone like a Daney available, um, we get to have everybody and continue to have our depth and solidify things in the infield. What, what do you think has been wrong with, or why do you think it, it appears that Camargo has taken a step back defensively? You know, I, I wish I could tell you, I mean, if, it could be there's a million things I think I've said this in an interview before we can craft all kinds of narratives was it not playing during the winter like you did the year before through late January was it not getting regular reps playing time here uh, was it trying to press maybe when he was playing and did get you know those that those starts hard to say but I think like anything else I think you know we talked to him going down getting every day at bats trying to get his timing back you know, he's still a young man with all the ability in the world he should get back to what he was Catch up area. You know, you sign him just saying he'll be our shortstop as long as possible. You, what, what do you anticipate with, with Dansby? You know, so we, you know, um, we didn't get that in depth in terms of commitments. It was, you know, he'll be in there tonight. And, you know, Snit will make the decisions in terms of playing time. You know, I'm sure Charlie will still get some, play, some time as well. But right now, uh, Danny's obviously a pure shortstop. That's the position he's played the bulk of his career. But, you know, we don't have any commitments that he's the everyday guy for sure and so on. Now, Snit decides to do that or wants to tell you guys that today, that's his call. But, um, you know, with Dansby right now, he's getting better, he's improving. We just want to make sure when this thing finally heals up, he doesn't have a setback and we don't rush things. So, uh, you know, right now we're trying to put the best 25 we can together uh, with the restrictions that we have. So we do expect Dansby back. It's just, you know, we don't have a firm timeline, but he is moving in the right direction. Camargo and Duvall both, hey, look, you could be back up here in a couple weeks and we may need you. Yeah, I think, look, I think the scenario with Duvall was um, Ortega's out of options, left-handed hitting outfielder, depth-wise, if we DFA Ortega, put him on waivers, he, can, he has a prior out, right, so he could elect free agency, he can get claimed. Duvall has options. He can be back in 10 days. Obviously, Johan the same way. We get to keep our depth. Um, they could be back sooner than 10 days with if there happens to be an IL. So rather than take the chance that we lose players via claim on, on waivers, electing free agency if they clear, you know, this made the most sense over the long term. Mitch Avery has always been a guy with a lot of speed, good range in, in the infield. Um, where is he at this point in his career? I mean, you still see a lot of really good good signs from him, even though he's, I guess, north of 30. Yeah, so his, you know, his sprint speed and things like that, if you look at StackHouse, is, is still good. There's some things we noticed with his infield play that, you know, we talked to Wash about and got his input and so on that, we think he can tweak or make some improvements on. So you know, he's got the, the gifts and the talents to be a very good defender. But like anything, there's times when you can improve. So um, I don't know how that's going to translate. Wash is aware of it. He's going to spend time with him. Uh, before we even went down this path, we had a meeting with Wash and Snit and Walt, former infielders, and just went through and pulled up some video and some things we noticed from our R&D department and basically you know, ask Wash, what do you think defensively? Where do you think he's going to be? What do you think you can do with him? So um, Wash likes the talent and was excited to work with him. You mentioned his gifts. I mean, when you had him, obviously, he was pretty highly regarded. Mm -hmm. Years later, you look at his skill set. Did his career kind of play out the way that you had thought, you know, at least skill set wise? Yeah, I mean, when we signed him, it was, um, you know, the way we, we viewed it was he was a glove first guy. Shortstop, you know, with 25-man roster, you always need someone that at a minute. We felt like the floor was he would be a backup shortstop on a team with the upside to be a starter because the defense and there was still potential to the bat. So I guess it's played out about right. He had some seasons where he started, went through arbitration, made some money. Um, so I think it was probably as expected, the way things have worked out for him. But, um, you know, he's always been extremely talented. He got a big bonus at the time. And, you know, his career has gone about as expected. I know you haven't made it official yet, but how likely would it be that we could see him? Is it like you want to be him to be an immediate impact player as soon as it's all said and done? Yeah, so he'll be in the lineup tonight, and but beyond that, that'll be up to Snit. So you know he'll be in there. Uh, I don't know where he's hitting in the lineup, but he'll be playing shortstop tonight. And from there, I know Snit will go day to day with it. So I'm sure there might be days that he goes with Charlie or whatnot. But right now, those are the two guys that can play shortstop on our club.